In this video, I will be addressing your comments, criticisms, compliments, questions. What energy you bring here, I will return to you with the maintenance of rule one, rule equal, the balance of the honor and the grace, and the position of peace and neutrality. Keep in mind, no one is twisting your arm to be here. So keep that in mind. If you are going to make claims or if you are choosing to not read the terms and conditions of the comments field, well, then you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Now, I don't ever take anything personally here. I recommend that you do the same. What I'm saying in this comments video is a critique based upon using the lens of correct sentence structure communication, parse syntax grammar, i.e. quantum grammar, the wonderful technology brought to the public in 1988 by the late Colin David Ivan Colin Miller. Keep that in mind. Everything I say is pretty much through that lens. So with that in mind, let's get to it. Oh, pardon me. I was just uh, sitting here enjoying my tasty, delicious, hot beverage, also known as the most poisonous liquid known to man, also known as coffee. Yes, it's so delicious and so deadly. Um, but I enjoy it. So there's that, you know. You'll see why I said that later on in the comments, folks. Welcome, welcome to another spicy edition of For the Clarity and Closure of the Viewers' Comments. For our first set, we're going to go to TikTok which does get a fair amount of activity. And um, someone named Kaleidoclism commented on one of my videos, and they said, this adds up with the teachings of Christ as well. Because it says it's not what goes into someone that defiles them, it's what comes from their mouth. And then... My kuleana is, are you interested in learning correct sentence structure to learn to communicate with correctness? And they can continue on to say, also says the power of life and death is in how we speak. And I continue on to say, because if you are truly interested, my YouTube channel has 900-ish videos free for you to study. But of course, folks like this just don't want to hear anything about what... The topic is that they're actually commenting on. They they want me, this is my perception, they appear to want me to hear what they have to say. They're not into what I'm having, what I'm saying, or what I'm trying to perhaps direct them towards. They just want to put their own two cents into it. And this individual, I mean, I don't know if they're religious or not. I don't know if they're one of those fanatic believers or not. But they talk about the teachings of Christ. Um, I mean, as far as philosophy goes, if you get the New Testament, any version of it, doesn't matter what version of it. At least it doesn't matter to me. And you read the, you get those red text versions where the words attributed to the fictional character known as Jesus Christ are printed in red. That's some pretty good philosophy, you know, for the most part. I would say 90% of it is uh, pretty sound, common sense type stuff. Except for the, you know, the, the, the psyop part of it, the psychological control mechanism where he says things like, give unto Caesar what is Caesar's, give unto the Lord what is the Lord's, turn the other cheek, BS like that. I mean, that tries to get people perhaps to think that they need to be subservient sheep, shut up, do what the hell they're told, pay their taxes, give all their money to the church, uh, never fight back, and then you'll have a nice place. You'll have a nice piece of the pie in the sky in some imaginary place that 
uh, no one really knows about, but everybody's looking forward to going to. So that's that. But does this individual is trying to draw parallels between correct sentence structure and that? And there really, to me, are no parallels there that are apparent. But hey, bro, it's fiction. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. Next set of comments, also from TikTok. Uh, up here, next to my head, you can see, there is nothing shady about Russell J. Gould or his claim of the life. Russell J. Gould is the postmaster general of the world, not this man. Um, I guess they're talking about me, but I have never, ever claimed to be postmaster general of anything. I have never, not once, not one single solitary time in life, in the public, on video, or in the private and confidential, have ever claimed to be Postmaster General. Never. Not once. Okay? Just so we're clear on that. So this individual, uh, perhaps, is based in the domain of presumption assumption, so I treat these comments like that. I mean, that might be their personal perception of what Russell J. Gould is. Maybe they know him personally. Maybe they're best buddies with Russell. But if that were the case, they certainly wouldn't be saying that. If they actually knew the guy, I feel like, you know. Because I don't, I've never met the man personally. However, I have seen hundreds of hours of footage, not only public footage, but I've been privy to communications like video communications and phone calls that were recorded in the private that he took part in and the way he treats people, the way he talks to people and the sort of chaotic and inconsistent manner that he does business leads me to think that that is a guy I want nothing to do with. And as far as shade, I mean, the tallest, largest most beautiful oak tree cannot compare to the shade that's around that guy from my own personal perception. So moving on, uh, Wayne Garcia says, hi, can I ask something? If Russell did do something wrong, can't Russell stop and correct? Now, folks, I'm taking this in the context of adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble. This Wayne Garcia obviously doesn't know the first thing about correct sentence structure or the psychology behind it. So that's how I'm answering them. So I say yes in answer to the question. To uh, can I ask something? I say yes. When actually the actual 100% correct psychological answer would be I can't tell you what you can or can do. I'm not one to tell you. I don't know. Can you ask me a question? Are you capable of that physically and psychologically, spiritually, emotionally? Can you do that? Grammatically, it would be, I mean, an adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun would be, may I ask you something? May I ask you something would be the thing. Uh, not can. And then the second one, I say, you'd have to ask Russell. I don't speak for others. So in context of that. If someone does something wrong, it's up to them to stop and correct. Completely up to them. No one can force anyone else to stop and correct. That is a psychological fallacy. That is fiction thinking. I mean, if someone is typing on a typewriter and they create a typo, they make a grammatical mistake, a spelling error. Let's just say that. They make a spelling error. They spell a word wrong. And then someone comes up behind them and says, hey, you spelled that word wrong. Stop and correct. And then the person sitting at the typewriter says, no, I'm not going to stop and correct. I'm going to leave it the way it is. And then the person behind him says, no, you're going to stop and correct. And the person at the typewriter says, make me. So then the person standing behind them gets them in a rear naked choke and threatens to put them unconscious if they don't stop and correct, well, then they're forced to stop and correct in a physical sense, yes. But still, that's not that's no contract. That's by coercion because contract is by consent. Still didn't consent to stop and correct. You were forced to do it. And that's an act of war. So I hope you, you, hope you folks are getting my point from these dramatic examples. No one can for, really truly force someone else to stop and correct. It's up to each individual to do that themselves 
And it takes a ton of humility, which, for one reason or another, most folks that I've met do not possess. Especially that guy with the initials RJG. So Robin Hood says, Russell J. Gould captured the Title IV flag in 1999 when we came out of our third and final bankruptcy. Uh, historically speaking, that is not correct, actually. That is not correct. Uh, Colin David Eiffelwin, Colin Miller did that. All right? Colin David Eiffelwin, Colin Miller did that, to the best of my knowledge. Now, Russell was David's student. Maybe Russell was there with him. But David was the mastermind. David was the teacher. Russell was the protege. Russell was the student. Russell was the underling. The apprentice. The Padawan. Please, folks, don't forget that. All you new folks that came on after David Wimbiller passed, you have no idea how it was, the way things were in the quantum grammar community before David passed, when David was still alive. You have no idea how things were. So, I mean, I hope that some of you do go back and research these things. Now we get some interesting comments from the longtime viewer, Pi314. This individual, I have had a few different encounters with them. And let me give you a little background on this, folks. One time, I mean, there have been multiple times when this man has approached me via email requesting to do workshops. He wants to do workshops. He wants to learn the grammar. He's ready to learn the grammar. And he never follows through. He always flakes out for one reason or another. But he always comes back a few months later and does the same shit over and over and over again. One time, he said he wanted to do workshops. He was ready to go. He wanted me to send him a contract and everything. And I did send him a contract. And then he sees a video where I talk about the concept of God and how if one is going to put a fact down on paper and correct sentence structure, one has to have a continuance of the evidence to be able to prove it to another contract party. He took offense to that, or not offense, but he, uh, he got a little triggered by that. And he sent me back an email and told me how disappointing it was that, that I didn't believe in God and that you know, it was foolish and that he has proof of it and blah, 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 blah. I mean, he got, he got a little, little excited about that. And so I wrote back to him pretty much saying, okay, what's your proof? The same way I can prove this is a cup or that I love my children, so on and so forth, you prove God. And instead of him giving any proof at all, he comes back with something like, well, you can't feel wind either, can you? Or you can't hold wind. Wind's not physical. How do you prove wind? And I was like, well, Pi 314, I can take you out on this porch back here. And if it's windy, you feel this sensation on your face. Oh, that's wind. We can certify that because it's through our, comes in through our five ports of sensation. We can feel it. We can hear it. Well, we can hear its effects on the trees and things like that. Sometimes you, it carries smells, so it carries smells. It's something, there's something there, and we call it wind, and we can easily certify it to another contract party. You can't really do that with God. So then, of course, he disappeared and uh, went silent for a while, and then he comes back. And Anyway, same thing here. He suddenly started commenting again, it, it, the cycle's starting over again. Um, and he says, and he's talking about the cure and can uh, Parse videos I did on curing cancer. And he says, perhaps they were being cheeky as curing cancer are non-fact-based words. That is 100% incorrect. And this individual would know that if they would actually buckle down and learn the grammar, which I have a feeling they will never do. Because curing cancer are both tangible contract. They are of unknown and recent origins to color the thinking of many minds. Now that is a complete assumption. Now, the first one, the first part of what he said, they are of unknown and recent origins. That may be so. All right. Most words are of recent and unknown origins. Okay. But the second part, talking about to color the thinking of many minds, how, do you, how does he know that that's what's going on there? Like, how can he actually prove that? 
How can he prove that someone did that? You can't. And again, this is what I'm talking about, correct psychology. Folks like this have great difficulty grasping correct sentence structure or buckling down and, and learning it because they keep participating or appear to keep participating with so many assumption presumptions that they just don't want to let go of. They participate with assumptions as facts is the best way I can put it. And then they say, I, of course, do not contract with these words as I am a master health scientist. So now they're giving themselves a title of master health scientist. So then my cooling to that is actually, if you are speaking in terms of correct sentence structure, both cure and cancer are very tangible. One word, one meaning. Also, I claim to be a master of correct sentence structure, meaning I have many years of successful teaching under my belt, a public YouTube channel with 900-ish videos and successful students. To claim to be a master of health science, or as you put it, master health scientist, is quite a claim to be making. Where would I find proof of this claim? My proof is in the public and easily accessible. Could you please share your proof? Thank you. It's my own personal curiosity. Nothing to do with grammar, but everything to do with continuance of evidence. Thank you. So what I'm asking Kenneth to do, Mr. Pi314, is to prove that he's qualified to hold the title of Master Health Scientist. Can anybody guess what his response is? Can anybody guess what he completely blows by, ignores, and doesn't even address? I bet you can. His coolie on it to that, or his response to that, is nothing cures. Cancer is a recent made-up name. One should never drink the most poisonous thing, coffee. All right, folks. What? The ever loving F does coffee have to do with what we're talking about here? The tangibility or non tangibility of cure and, and cancer. All right? Of course, they don't offer to credential themselves or even address that. Of course, they're not going to because they have no ground to stand on and they know it. So they're trying to, by my perception, they're trying to misdirect. They're trying to throw flash bombs to throw people off because perhaps they're losing their footing on appearing to be smart and intelligent and Mr. Scientist and, ooh, they're so, just so smart. Darn it. Us normal people can't, can't keep up, right? Yes, I am uh, making light of this because I have so much experience with this individual that they're, it's hilarious. I get a lot. A lot of joy and uh, and uh, humor out of this person's comments. Just the way they wiggle around like that. When it comes to the grammar, they scurry away. One time, and I already shared this with you folks. One time, I had a face-to-face -face consultation with them. And I asked them, do you mind if I give you a syntax test? Because they said, I can syntax so good. Such a good syntaxer. That they're really good at syntaxing. So I gave them a simple sentence to syntax. They couldn't do it. They couldn't even syntax one word. They totally froze up. And then they said, well, normally I can syntax, but just not right now. Okay. Anyways. Uh, so my kuleana to that is thank you for sharing your opinion, which holds no value here because you've completely ignored my request for credentialing yourself, master health scientist. And folks such as yourself, you've done this in the past, always telling others what they should or shouldn't do. Either you didn't read the terms and conditions of this comments field or you lack consideration or both. Perhaps you think you know a lot about stuff the normal folks such as myself know nothing about. Everyone knows that one sip of coffee will kill you and send you to hell for eternal damnation. That's why most folks I know drink it and live to a ripe old age. You really are hilarious. Mm, so good. Next comment comes from Don Campbell. And they say, what makes these books fiction? Is this something that you have been taught by man? He's talking about Romley Stewart. And uh, he's talking about, uh, I guess, my reference to the Styles manuals 
the fiction styles manuals, the Chicago styles of manual of styles, and so on and so forth, that Romley gives jurisdiction to his grammar to. I say that those are fiction. So he says, Don says, what makes these books fiction? Well, it's simple. The grammar makes them fiction. The fiction syntax, the word modification, is what makes them fiction. Don, this is all in the context of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. This channel is a correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar venue and channel. That's what we do here. That's what I do here. I've been teaching it for six years. That's the context we're talking under. So that's the context that as you, as a guest aboard my vessel, that's the context that you would have to be aware of, which you don't appear to be. But hopefully you are now uh, after my kuleana. And then they said, is this something that you have been taught by man? Well, yes. Uh, actually, I was taught correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar by the late colon David Ivewin, colon Miller, and also uh, by colon Raven, hyphen Farhad, hyphen Tohidi, colon Efren. And those are both men. So the answer to that is yes. I just want to know where you are coming from and which authority of styles do you stand by? I stand by the authority of my own style. I take authority over my construct using my dictionary. Notice, Don, that the word author is in the word authority. In order to be the authority of something or to be able to claim authority of something, you would necessarily have to be the author of it in most cases. I mean, there are exceptions, but for the most part, it's pretty obvious, all right? So that's the authority I stand by, my own. I do not give authority to anyone else or anything else. And then they go on to say, on the Australian government website, it states how to use styles and not to use all caps. So I don't know why this individual is sharing that. However, uh, I will offer some uh, commentary on that. If Don Campbell wishes to give authority and jurisdiction to the Australian government over his contracts and his words and his styles, that is Don Campbell's choice. He's more than welcome to do that. No one's twisting his arm not to. If Don Campbell wants to learn correct sentence structure and take jurisdiction over his own contracts, his own grammar, his own words, that's also a choice. It's up to him. That way the government would not have authority over what he writes down. But again, I digress. That's all a choice. The contract is done by the parents because they are your guardian at that time. Yes, and it's an adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble contract that they're talking about birth certificates, certificate of birth, whatever it is, it has nothing to do with the little infant itself, himself or herself. It has everything to do with the government and the parents, all right? It's a bill of the lading. It's completely contingent upon the live creature that's living and breathing as the baby that grows up as they gain knowledge and they reach a certain point, they can choose to extricate themselves from that because it's an assumed contract anyways. They did not consent to it. They weren't old enough to consent to it. But when they get old enough and they have knowledge enough to claim authority over themselves and their jurisdictions and their vessels or claim uh, stewardship of such things, and if they have the knowledge to do it, they can certainly do it. All right? And no one can tell them otherwise. After they have signed you over to the state, hence straw man, all caps. I mean, yeah, more fiction BS. I'm not saying it's not relevant. I'm not saying that's not what happens. I'm just saying it's, it's fiction BS. And once you get the knowledge, once you get the knowledge and the skills and the tools of these correct sentence structure mechanics, that stuff is completely irrelevant and has no bearing on anything in your life anymore if you choose to to become autonomous let's put it that way but i do appreciate don campbell being respectful and uh coming at me from that angle rather than the normal angle from these 
uh, I guess I would call them common law Australians from that neck of the woods that are followers of the Glossa Channel and Romley Stewart and who else? There's that other guy with the with the uh, Adolf mustache. Like those guys usually are pretty rude, and they use foul language, and they're so presumptive and rude. It's just crazy. I don't know. They probably get along well with Russell J. Gould and all that, but this guy was very honorable and respectful. So thank you very much for that. I welcome folks like that onto this channel, and hope that their interest gets peaked and they, and they want to learn more about correct sentence structure. Next comment comes from Sterling Hawley and they say, Masons deceive. That's how they operate. So he, meaning David Wynn Miller, gives a little truth with a lot of trickery and lies. I do not trust anyone who says they are a Mason. All right, first of all, let, let's work backwards here in and above what I wrote in the comments. David Wynn Miller gives a little truth with a lot of trickery and lies. How does this person know that when they don't know correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar? I mean, yes, they have put brackets around their plain, simple English. However, they, they don't really give any indication that they are anything other than a bare, basic, beginner newbie. So how do they know where the tricks and the lies are? And how do they know their actual lies? That, that's quite an intense claim to make, not to mention claim, but accusation, to claim that someone's a liar. But it is easy to claim that someone who's deceased, it's, it's easy to call a decedent a liar. It's easier to do that than it is to uh, a living being a liar. Let's put it that way. So I, Saying that David Miller was a liar is just is repugnant to me that someone would say that because you can't prove it. And especially if you don't know shit about the grammar, why would you make assumptions like that? It just shows your ignorance more than anything else. So my coolie on it to that is what exactly are you basing that statement upon? Meaning Masons deceive. Do you personally know any Masons in your life to be able to state something like that? Just curious. And then they respond, yes, I've known several Masons personally. I don't associate with those people anymore. However, I can say they have been, for the most part, very crooked, self-centered, unsympathetic towards others that weren't part of the group. I've read the Masonic Bible. It's very old and has a lot of information in it. So have I. Yes, there's a lot of information in a lot of books. Masonic Bible is one of them. I also have known several Masons personally, and I can tell you right now, out of all the folks, let's see, if a thousand folks watch this video, I will bet you that 75% of those folks have family members, immediate family members, who are a member of a Masonic Lodge. Are they all deceivers? Are they all crooked? Are they all unsympathetic towards others? Making blanket statements is crazy. And that's, you know, in my coolie honor this individual, if you go to this comments thread, you'll see that that's what I'm basically trying to direct them towards is the absurdity of making blanket statements. That's like saying if your skin is a certain color, well, then you're a criminal. If your skin's a certain color, then you support slavery. If you're... <laughs> Hair is a certain color, then you need psycho uh, psychiatric help. It's just blanket statements that, I, while they're funny and they serve a purpose, I guess, in some point, I don't know what point that would be, uh, literally and practically in everyday life, it's not beneficial to anyone to do that. I personally navigate on an individual basis. I make my judgments as, uh, you know, maintenance of rule, one rule, equal, balance of honor and grace, position of peace and neutrality, based upon each individual's performance, their words, the way I, 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 race, ethnicity, where they're from, doesn't ever really come into it. Although I have noticed certain characteristics from certain cultures, it's very interesting how some folks are, like, more rude than other folks across the board. I mean... 
And I do use those references sometimes. But I always say it appears to me. I don't, I don't say it as if it's a fact. I'm sharing with you my perception. So it's very important how you convey things clearly so that it puts it in your jurisdiction and you're not making claim for claims for others. I'm not sure of Sterling Hawley's uh, grammatical knowledge as far as quantum grammar goes, but that was my little quantum grammar lesson for them. You're welcome, Sterling. Next comment comes from Tin Rib Music, and they say, Good tip for the Trivium. He's not scary, people. You just have to drop the try, commit, and do it. I'd say knowledge needs to be self-proximate for a no. I don't know what that means. Do basic virtues need explaining or pointing to? Trained normal outsourcing takes time to gain accountability. Is it getting worse? Do basic virtues need explaining or pointing to? Sometimes. Maybe to children and maybe also to adults that didn't get that type of training when they were children, I guess. My opinion. Okay, now this is their opinion. Traversal and change from Fiction Babble Collective Mindset is different for all. Correct. Would you like me to search for that for you has been forgotten. For tangible contracting in New Zealand, the basic counting at supermarket is with my concern here becoming embarrassment for some when $10 note and $1 coin given for $5 change means confusion and cannot be done in the head. Many different outcomes, reactions back following a freeze of time and mind. With humility, I explain I would sooner have a note than the coins today. Ha ha, scared to email you, fear of words on a screen. Are they perhaps thinking now? Would be a pleasure to be live on your show one day, man. This 132 is a great shoot. Thank you for the knowledge and recap of the fundamentals. Okay, they're talking about for the Quantum Grammar Shoot 132 episode. I've done 132 episodes, folks. Yay. For the syntax, totally agree. Could you syntax your way out of a prison? As I reply in the comments, if you have closure on correct sentence structure and you're 100% confident with it, 9.99999 times out of 10, you would not end up in prison. It wouldn't even go any further than your mailbox, probably. It wouldn't need to, from my experience. I found there were two prisons. One is an attribute. The second is tangible building with a tough audience. Could honesty and trust with self-confidence with our own relative facts dropping third-party knowledge and what others might think be a problem? Well, anything can be a problem. It just depends upon you. As you said at the beginning, it's different for everybody. Disjointed SMS message slang is the new level of grammar and ambiguity here, the baiting of presumption. Yeah, I can see that in social media comments, definitely. And I'm definitely learning it. You know, it's fun for me because I was an English major back in 96. And I am fascinated with the way words change and new slang comes into play. And, you know, I'll hear young young folks talk. I'll be like, what in the hell are they talking about? What does that mean? <laughs> But then I get familiar with it, and then I start using it, too. So, I mean, in my verbal conversations. Uh, passing through with no haughty, naughty words. I guess they're referring to themselves. All the best to you. You have my gratitude with the etymology and synonyms methods shared. My natural go-to and online all the time. I thank you, Jason. Jonathan Simon Bell. Well, thank you very much, Jonathan. Much gratitude to you for your membership, for your comment. And for your very thoughtful words. And the final comment comes from James Ryan. And I've addressed this, I think, in its own video, if I'm not mistaken. But I'll just address it real quick here. What would be the opposite of that? And then I say, opposite of what? And then they say, the word for curing cancer. The opposite of the word curing cancer. And then I say, James, do you have access to Google? If so... You can literally search what is the opposite antonym of cure? What is the opposite antonym of cancer? Not sure why, six months later, you still do not possess the capacity to answer your own question. And then he went on to say, 
if you read the comments, they went on to say that they've been very, very busy. So for six months, they've been very, very busy and unable to take 30 to 45 seconds to get on Google and Google the antonyms of curing cancer. Ain't gonna lie, man. That, that dude must be very, very busy. I mean, so busy. I'm surprised they can remember to breathe. See, folks, I just did it. I just said, not gonna lie, or ain't gonna lie. That's one of those slang things that, that, that the kids use these days. A lot of video gamers use it, you know? Not gonna lie, you gotta stand on 10 toes. Say it with your chest. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.